So I'm here to talk a little bit about running an efficient local seminar. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of being able to follow in the footsteps of Jim and work with Fred and Barb, who are district coordinators. And they've, they put together an incredible local. And in between, we've had a couple of other locals before I took over. And there are some things that you want to make sure that you're doing, because I think it's a, a lot of times we get overwhelmed. I think a lot of people end up um, taking some time and they look at the, the position. This is not the path to get here today, by the way. <laughs> um, but we, we have a local seminar. We have an event that's happening. And, and people get all stressed out about what's going on for the event. And I learned early on that if, if you're gasping up to the event and you're gasping after the event, you're not utilizing your, your, your ASP teams at all. And so you want to make sure that you're leveraging yourself as much as possible. But while you're doing that, you want to make sure that you know that this is a business within a business. You're not just putting on a meeting, right? It's not just an event to have. You have to make sure that it, you're, you're running this like it, it, it's supposed to be run. So there's some key things that you wanna know. You've got to, as a local coordinator, it is your job to know the different roles, to create the, your power teams, to create consistent communication within you, your board, the ASP teams, the field, et cetera, knowing your numbers. And I don't think enough, enough of us know our numbers the way that we should. We're gonna talk about all these as we go along. So knowing your roles, know all aspects of your business. Now I understand as unfranchised owners, our job is to be successful with our unfranchised, lead from the front, let people know this is what it takes to be successful. But when it comes to running the local, you need to do the same thing. You wanna make sure that you know all aspects of what has to happen at that local and define each of those tasks for the ASP member. So if you think about it, these are some of the tasks that need to get done. And I've got four pages of these tasks. And I mean, it, it's over 150 different items throughout the day that need to get done or up until you have your event and then after the event. And so for one person to have to take care of all those things, it can get stressful. And so the reason we get stressed out is because we don't know what all these tasks are. If you knew them like the back of your hand, you wouldn't need to worry about whether or not uh, it would get done or not because you could have a task list. I mean, we literally have checklists of each and everything that needs to get done before the event, you know, four weeks before the event, two weeks before the event, one week before the event, the day of the event, the day after the event, a week after the event, and then usually like 20 days to make sure we get our EFRs in. That's for me. <clears throat> All right, and even the EFR, I don't do them, okay? I have my, my treasurer and my admin take care of that, and from there, I just review it, and I make sure the numbers are right. I question the numbers that are there to make sure, but I don't know, I don't do every single piece of the seminar. I was sitting down talking with Kelly a couple of months ago, and, and uh, we, we, were, we were at his local, and he's just, he, he was the MC, but that's all he did. Or he didn't even MC the whole event, he MC at the very beginning, and then he had someone else take care of the rest of it. But it's not that he didn't take care of it. It was being taken care of. All right. Um, th there's four pages of this. And, then, and so I'm trying to go through them all. <laughs> so, but again, it's all the different pieces. So what I tell local coordinators or any, in any role, whether it's a UBP coordinator, whether it's a local coordinator, even some district coordinators that I've talked to, is sometimes you've got to slow your role. You've got to slow it down. And, and, and not take on and put so much on your shoulders because, that, again, that's when you get stressed out. I, like I said, I am responsible for all the tasks that happen. Ultimately, it is my job to make sure they all get done. Is that fair? Yes. All right? But my role is not to do everything. You have to delegate it. You have to create that leverage. We have, we've done a great job in our unfranchised businesses in developing that leverage. And so you want to be able to create that leverage within your, or within your locals at the same time or your UBPs. So when I talk about creating a power team, some of the things that you want to think about, is, and this is one of the things I pride myself in, and in our area, we have multiple genealogies, multiple lineages within our area. And, I'm, and I've seen some locals and even some districts try to just grab in only their organization because they know that they've got a little bit more power, a little bit more control about what they say happens. And, and they can get, sometimes we can unintentionally get a little power hungry when it comes to that. And so what I do for a check and balance is 
utilize different teams. You know, so maybe my admin team might happen to be in my organization or might not. Maybe my, my treasurer I try to have not in my organization. I, have, I break the different duties out, and that way, when it comes to input for speakers, when it comes to input for um, how things are run, how the event is done, what each organization needs. I've got, I've got little feelers in every organization in my area so I can say, okay, this is what the area needs, not just what I want to see, okay? And so, and that way you can assign the duties. My job, again, is to, uh, to follow up on the completion of those tasks to make sure that uh, they, get, they get completed. Again, it's about checks and balances. Uh, it's about accountability. I, I find that if, you know, you don't necessarily want your spouse to be the, the other signer on the account, right? You want to make sure that there's somebody else that's doing that. Review the performance of your ASP team members too, okay? And that from, from top to bottom. I, I take a look at, you know, how is my admin doing? Are they doing the tasks that are necessary? Are they getting them done on time? Am I getting reports back, you know, when it comes to my UBP coordinators? Um, and, and, and does anybody here run a perfect local or district? Shelly. Because <laughs> she does it all herself. <laughs> Shelly and I are both local coordinators in Wisconsin. We go back and forth all the time on who's got the best local in Wisconsin. So when I introduced myself, I almost said, Southern Wisconsin local coordinator is the best in Wisconsin. But I stopped myself because I tried to be nice. But I said it anyway. Anyway, <laughs> um, sometimes you're going to have issues. You're not always going to have the right people in place. And sometimes at the end of the day, you might have the absolute wrong people in place. And as much as we want to be their friend and we want to be nice and we, want to, we don't want to hurt anybody's feeling, sometimes you got to fire them. I hate to say it. I had a, a, a treasurer that we had for five years and everything looked great. She was helping the field. She was doing a ton of different things. And we found out she was stealing from the local in excess of $10,000. And, and I'll tell you what she was doing, okay, just so you guys can look for it in your local. So what she was doing is um, people were buying individual tickets. Okay, so you can buy individuals for 30, three for 80, 100 for, uh, four for 100. So what she would do is she would take the people that were buying the tickets for uh, $30 each, every time there was three or four, she would group them in, put them in that bucket instead and pocket the rest. Or she would take tickets from the back of the back of the pile, because she, she printed the tickets also. So we knew how many tickets were being we knew we thought we knew how many tickets were being printed. So she would take tickets from the back and she would sell those and just pocket all the money. Very entrepreneurial, absolutely. A lot of leverage, you know. <laughs> A little bit of linear income that backfired. <laughs> okay, um, and it took me a while to find it. Because it, it was literally impossible to see. And, uh, and so it's things to watch out for. That's why we really implement the checks and balances. You know, when the registration sheets come in, when, when we're selling tickets, they, the, the, the sign-in sheets or the registration sheets for those go to somebody else right away so that we can make sure that we're covering our bases. And I mean, we have to run a profitable local, right? And, so, and if you're not watching these things or you don't have somebody else to be able to check it, because again, I can't have eyes everywhere, so do what you can to protect your local, your area. Because at the end of the day, this person had implanted themselves so deep into the field that when we had to get rid of her, I mean, we, she lost her distributorship over it at the end of the day because, uh, with that and some other things. Um, it really hurt our field for a while. And we had to rebuild from that. So that's why you want to protect yourself up front. Um, and you guys, are, you guys are all the elite of the elite, and so I can be very transparent with you and tell you exactly what happened um, because I don't want to see it happen in your areas. Consistent communication. You want to make sure that you're consistently having communication with your executive board. For me, it's not just, um, it's not everybody on the leadership team. I see some locals do that. They try to, have, they try to get input from everybody but when you have too many voices, you don't hear anything. And so I, I try to keep my board meetings you know, to under you know, five or six people. Um, if, you, if you have more than that, all of a sudden, it, there, there's, there, you never get anything accomplished. And so you know, my, my admin chair, you know, she's in charge of my speaker chair. 
So I, my, my speaker chair doesn't come to my board meetings. Uh, my, tra my challenge coordinator comes, my treasurer does, my technical chair, because we always want to make sure we're doing better technically. We want to make sure that we have the best system. Um, you know, we, we want to run it as good as our regional or better. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so these are some things that we go over in our board meeting. You know, we'll, we'll talk about what worked. And I think it's important to talk about what worked. If you don't talk about that, then you can't repeat it, right? And so then I also talk about what didn't work and what can we fix, what can we do better? And so each person on the board goes through that and I encourage them to talk to everybody on their teams or at least a few of them to say, hey, what did you guys like about the event? What, what really worked from, you know, from a physical standpoint? What worked from a technical standpoint? You know, what did you think of the speaker? That kind of thing. So that we can you know, decide whether or not we're gonna bring Cullen in again or not. And so, <laughs> which I would. <clears throat> And then also preparing for the next event. We have six locals every year. You know, so when you, com when you combine that with the regionals, the districts, the two major events, we literally only have two months that we don't have an event in our area. And so we are always on top of what's the next event, what's happening, what's, what's coming next. Know your numbers. I cannot stress this enough. You have to know your numbers. I, I've, I've, I've said this time and time again. I say it to my board all the time. This is a business. At the end of the day, we have to, be, we have to make money. We have to be profitable. If we're not profitable, we're doing something wrong. And it, it, there's, it's just like any other traditional business, right? If you're, if you're not making money with your local, you do one of two things. You either bring in more money or you get rid of expenses. But the bottom line is you have to be profitable. Review your financials with your UBP, UBP coordinators. Look at where their numbers are every single month. Uh, we, have, we have our UBP every week, every Tuesday. So about once a month, we go through what those, num what those numbers are. And I'm not just talking about the financials, but I'm talking about the attendance, how many guests we have, what kind of conversions are we seeing, how are people coming on board, what are the good speakers, what are the bad speakers. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but when I, when I say good or bad, I mean who's closing and who's not, who's, who is creating motion with in the area and and I, and I, I love the area I love the speakers we've got some great people we've got a lot of million dollar members in our area but that doesn't mean that every single one of them will have to speak okay um, it, there there are so, I've got one speaker in my, my area this person all I do when they go in front of the room is they tell stories and they barely they, they show they take like 10 minutes to go through the actual plan right now stories sell I get it right and and sometimes he's good at being able to close but I'll tell you, I don't bring them up very often because it, it, it's not effective. You know, we've we, we got to have a system in place and keep things consistent. Seminars. My whole board, they know all the numbers. There's no questions. It's completely transparent. They see where the money is coming in, where the money is going out. Um, but because that way, when they see the numbers at the end of the day, they know, they're thinking in their mind all the time, where can, what ideas do I have to make it better, lower the costs, you know, increase the revenue, that kind of thing. Complete transparency wherever possible. Mind your numbers on a consistent basis too. So, you know, we have speakers that come in. We have a good time. Tom came in a while back. We went to, you know, St. Fru uh, Francis Brewery, which is now closed. Um, <laughs> uh, they were a shop local. You know, <laughs> right. They had, a great, they had a great fish fry. That's why we went there, right, Tom? Um, and, and so it, because we all, we all went, but that didn't mean that the local paid for everybody's meal, right? right. right? You know, they, or they, or we definitely did not pay for the drinks that went on that night either. Um, challenge winner, leadership team dinners. We do stuff after our local every event. You know, sometimes we'll go to Jim and Lisa's house. Sometimes we'll go to a restaurant. We'll we'll change it up often so it's not the same thing, the same old, same old all the time. But we also have everybody who attends pay ten or fifteen dollars. You know, um, one one event we knew was going to be more expensive, so we charged fifteen. Uh, we charged fifteen dollars for it instead of ten. So keep that in mind. Nobody minds. That's your admin teams. That's, that's me. Yep. As regional director, if I go, I'm paying. I just want to make sure everyone hears. I hear people, sorry, I'm just going to say, people, people complain they don't have enough money, and then we'll look at an EFR, and they took out a team and spent $700 because they said, I got to give them something back. We grew up in, in an era of we all just contributed, right, Barb? And we gave 10 or 15, and we've kept it that way. 
for 20 some years because if I'm going, why wouldn't I pay my 15 bucks or my 10? You know, I'm part of the team. Uh, and so you do a great job with that. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. And, and the value isn't just in the meal. The value is networking with other people within the area. The value is networking with the speaker that's in town that night. And, you know, and, and so... I, I see some of the areas, they have really small gatherings after their, their, their local event because of the, the cost that might be involved in it. Hey, if you did a copay for you know, 10 or $15, you could invite all the leadership team and keep the cost down, probably even to the same cost it was, right? So try and do everything that you can. Um, this is a big thing, though. The only, you know, the only person that we usually don't have to have pay for their drinks is the speaker, um, and, and, unless it's Jim. Um, <laughs> then we make Jim pay for everything. <laughs> All right. Um, exec board meetings. I, I, like I said, I'm, I love communication. I think if you, don't, if you don't share your expectations, they have nothing to reach for, right? And with those expectations, it's like my marriage. If I don't tell my wife what I want, then she doesn't meet that. That's my fault, not hers, right? So same thing with your board, with your teams, with your organizations. And so we'll have board meetings, whether it's at my house or at a restaurant, but we'll keep those costs down. You know, so, so we go to Einstein Bagels or Buffalo Wild Wings and it's, a, it's $10. I'm not going to take them to Bartolotta's and have a $50 steak. Okay. It, it, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it, when I had a traditional business, I wouldn't have done that there either. Why would I do that here? And this is not even my money to be playing with. Why am I spending money that's for the field and helping the field get better and the organization? and the area get better, I want to make sure that I can put that money back in and help, help them. So stay away from the expensive restaurants. Uh, marketing promotion, there are th I don't do all the promotion with that either. Okay, I'll, I'll do some of it. I won't do all of it. We use a couple things. We use social media. How many of you guys use social media to promote your events? Great, do that. I like it, but, okay, um, two things if you want. If you... If you if you're in an area that has a lot of groups, a lot of Facebook groups within it, and, you're, and you find yourself just going crazy trying to put items into that, there's a program out there called Post Planner. It's postplanner.com. It's like 2 or $3 a month. It's really inexpensive. And that will, if, all you have to do is ask the admins of each of those groups for you to be an admin or whoever you're going to delegate this to. And what that will what'll happen is then they can post it one time and it goes to all the groups at once. Okay, um, and so that can, I, I like social media, but it's still a pull. Your, the field has to go out there and look at it. They may see a notification, but then when they see a notification from Stacy Teague that they just hit Go Now Wisconsin, team do some things, do, do the work, make the money, um, soul mission, and hit all these different groups, they immediately know that it's just a promo for something, right? And so then they don't go look at it half the time. So what, I'll, what, I, what I've really been going back to is more of a push environment when it comes to getting information out to the field. I've, I've gone back to doing more emails, You're really implementing the, 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 the website and to getting people to subscribe to our email list because when it goes into their email box, they're more likely to see it. And they're not seeing 15 notifications for the same thing. They're seeing one, and they can open it up. In my subject, ma subject lines, I rarely put exactly what it's about. I make them open it. <laughs> Right, and so check this out. Look at this, you know, exciting stuff. You know, um, tis the season to be Tom Dombro. I said the last one was because I'm doing the UVP on Tuesday. Uh, the other thing is grassroots stuff. The, this is what I think is really important, and that's really going down, working with your leaders to have them call and text other leaders and other people within the field. You know, uh, Jim and I have been working on this a lot. I think the, at the last event we were talking about, I think he sold just by texting the field, saying, hey, tickets are going to sell out today. You want to get your ticket. Can I get how many tickets do you want to pick up for you? I think he sold like 27 tickets extra that we wouldn't have sold at the local. Okay. The individual text. So each leader is text, texting the people within their organizations. Now, if you want to get a text service, you can do that too. Um, it, it, it's, uh, there's a fee for that. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do to keep my costs down. Um, I, we've been looking into a text service. So if anybody's using one of those, let me know. Um, with marketing and promotion, create that urgency you know, at the event. So tickets are only available the day of. To me, this is important. 
we weren't doing this for a while. We got lax on this. We used to, you know, it was, you, you could buy tickets before, you could buy tickets the day of, and then we'd let tickets roll on for a little while. And we just saw that ticket sales were just sluggish and frustrating and not exciting anymore. And so by changing it to the, only the day of, and I mean just the day of, there's no, the, the Tuesday before, there's no, even before the event starts, it's the first break, tickets go on sale. Second break, tickets are on sale. At the end of the day, we're done. And we sell more tickets in that short period of time than we do. And there's more excitement. More people get up. People are in line. They see what's going on. Uh, and, and they want to do what other people are doing. So I encourage, I encourage that. Prizes and drawings, corings, HPPs. We, we, we encourage people, you know, the leaders in our area to offer their services. Do, you know, if people buy three tickets, can we put their name in a drawing for you to do, you know, maybe a 30-minute Zoom coaching session, or would you do an HBP for them? And so we have different area leaders do that, and it seems to create more excitement. More people are buying tickets to get the added service, the added added bonus to it. Offer help as the local. I'm going to tell you this. This is my firm belief as a local district coordinator. I believe you should be offering your help to the field, whether they're your organization or not. You want to be able to get in the homes, get in to help other organizations. They will follow you more. They will, want, they will do more for you and your area if you're working with them. <clears throat> Twice a year we do some sort of social, whether it's picnics or sporting events. We do holiday events. We just did an all-star dinner. Um, which was absolutely incredible, you know, and, and this, we did our dinner separate from the event, okay, this was not, you know, this is not a GMTSS event, this is just a separate dinner, and we were able to, you know, we, we charge $25 a person, um, and then we have awards and recognition. Would you agree with me that it's important to recognize the individuals that are moving and shaking and helping within the area? Yes. Absolutely, and so we do that wherever we, wherever we can. Um, to me, when I went to my first All-Star, and I saw the, f that, that's where the family was, right? And I'm going to encourage you guys that you have to do these socials now, because too many locals, I believe, including my own, were going to the six-hour local, the six-and-a-half-hour local. So what's ha what happens is that we, we have the day, we, and we start the day at 9 o'clock, we've got a break, then we have another break, and then we're done by 3, 3.30 but we lost our lunch. Right. So we have a shorter day, people are getting out early, woohoo, right? But we lost the hour lunch where people are networking and talking with each other and, and getting to know each other, introducing our guests to the other people with the area. We're missing a social aspect to this that is a, a natural human need. People have to have that interaction. So do what you can to bring your teams together. You know, call your leaders up. Have them come over to your house. Have, you know, uh, for the Super Bowl, go someplace and watch the game. You know, whatever. Go watch ice skating with Don Martin. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Hockey, same difference. Um, <laughs> everybody in Toronto runs the hill, uh, wants to kick my shins. Set your stage. Look, make your event look as professional as possible. What we literally do is we looked at our regional and we said, okay, what's the regional look like? We've got to set the stage, we've got the, the drape in the background, we've got lights, we've got dual screens, we've got uh, monitors in the front, we've got a TV in the front for the people in the front row to see. We're doing everything we can. We've got tables for everybody. Okay, now if you've got an 800 person local, you're not going to be able to do that, but you could do it for the first few rows, you know, first 5, 10, 15 rows, depending on how, many, how big your event is, as as a thank you for or congratulations to, the, to your million dollar members, your challenge winners, you know, things like that. And so recognition is important. Um, at our All-Star, we did, you know, top retailer, top recruiter, um, rising star. Um, we, we did a table decorating contest. That was so much fun. I mean, th this one here had dry ice and it looked like there was clouds coming over their table. It was, it was really cool. We had the white table that had... I called them swans. They said they were goose. They were geese, <laughs> right? Um, we we did a at the 
at, at, let me back up one here. At, for the event, instead of being in a suit like I normally am, I started the day out in a suit just so I could do my, 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 my segment. But then we had a, a, a ugly sweater contest. And so everybody that was there that wanted to wear an ugly sweater, they did. People had so much fun with that. I mean, there isn't a single person up there that's not smiling except for me because I'm not paying attention to the camera guy, right? <laughs> right? Um, then we, we had our all-star uh, table decorating contest. Actually, this is uh, the winners and then the board on my left-hand side, which I would not be able to do what I do without them. So even though they're not here, I definitely want to give them all the recognition in the world for being absolutely amazing. Um, with our all-star dinner, we had a table decorating contest. And from the table decorating contest, we had some prizes. Well, we did it by round of applause to see who did the best. Well, I had two tables that I just could not figure out who was the best. So what do you do when you try to, you know, when you try to pick a winner? Oh You've got to have a dance-off. <laughs> and so we had a dance-off. <laughs> our first ever dance-off. So this was, this was part of the dance-off. It was just two people. They, they got to choose who it was going to be. Now, from there... It was so good that we could, <laughs> I should really skip this. Anyway, it was so good that we couldn't pick a winner again, so we had to pick, we had to have them do another dance off. And so we had Kong on the left side. We have, we have Tom Schneider over here. He gets in the game. <laughs> do you know who won now? <laughs> right? Here's the best part. Tom Schneider was just visiting the other table, wasn't actually part of the table. <laughs> and they still picked it. I'm in tears over here. But the whole area, they're having a good time. Oh, there's the... <laughs> it's not real till it's on Facebook. <laughs> That's what I want to do here at the end, was that that's the Market America family, right? And so when we, for us as the board, we dressed up, and we dressed up as JR and Lauren and Mark and Kevin, and Jim and Lisa came as Jim and Lisa. <laughs> we didn't want Andrew to feel left out, so we made Andrew show up too, and Dennis. But we, we have a good time with things. And this, the, the local position does not need to be stressful. It doesn't need to be at all. You can have a lot of fun with it. Pick the right people. If they're not the right people, find the right people. Just with, like with the business. We can all do this. We can have amazing events and help the whole area grow. So thank you very much for your time. Yeah.